Let's make Vietnamese spring rolls with the northern pike that I caught. And I'll show you how I make a really nice dipping sauce too. Oh, oh, sh oh, 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 yes. <laughs> Can we keep pike right now? Oh, but then there's a size too, huh? Oh man, yo, can't believe I caught a pike. Haven't caught a pike in like forever. Look at this. <laughs> All right, let's see if uh, we can keep it. All right, here, Minnesota DNR fishing regulations. Northern Pike, May 13th through February 25th, 2024. Today's, today's February like fourth or something, right? I can keep 10, not more than two over 26. All from 22 to 26 must be immediately released. This is definitely not a 22 to 26. Okay, we're checking the length. Oh, hey. It's about a 18 inch pike. So I'm gonna keep this then. All right, after checking the regulations and uh, rules, I'm gonna keep this. We're gonna keep this pike, bring it home and eat. There you go. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. Oh, oh, man. Holy crap. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Oh man, this is awesome. The luck has changed. Here it is. This is 20 inches. All right, we're keeping this one too. So anything that's 22 to 26 inches, we have to let go. But man, dude, it's it's been so long since I've caught a pike though. It's crazy how long it's how long it's been. Pike, the two pike. Let's bring them in. Perfect. Two pike. I caught two northern pike. I'm gonna clean and cook and eat these today. So the plan for the fish today is going to be some summer rolls. I'm going to just simply boil the fish and then I'll use it as a protein source for my summer rolls. So the fish doesn't necessarily need to be seasoned because it's going to be wrapped up with other ingredients and there's going to be a sauce that you dip. I'm going to cut the head off right here. Northern Pike also has a lot of those Y bones and so I'm going to just boil it and then I'm going to finger through it to get all the bones out. Look at this. Look at these eggs. Bright orange eggs. Look at that. Wow. All right, there you go. Cleared it out on the inside, scaled it. I just need to rinse this and this should be ready to go. And I'm just going to pop it into some boiling water, and then we're just gonna pull the pieces of meat off. I really can't believe that I'm actually processing fish in February right now. I rarely go ice fishing. I've gone ice fishing probably maybe like three or four times in the past like five years. <laughs> and it was only when my friend Eric would invite me to go. But Minnesota's weather has been really crazy lately. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like spring right now. We had probably one week where it was really cold. We had like a cold snap where it was like negative 15 degrees for about a week and a half or so. But when that was up, we started getting this really nice weather. It's been about 40 to 50 degrees on average. So the weather's been unusually nice. I am trying my best to take advantage of the nice weather and trying to go out here and just do stuff. But I really do miss the snow. I want the snow to be out here. I want it to snow maybe three, four, maybe five feet. And then if the temperature remains around 30 degrees, I'll be happy. At 30 degrees, 32 degrees, the, the snow stays around, it sticks around, but it's not like unbearably cold. And I'll be able to bring Raven outside and take her out on camping trips and stuff like that. Right now, everything is muddy and gross and I just don't want to take her out. It also appears that a lot of plants are popping up when they should not be <laughs> because it's gotten so nice. I feel like in a week or so, there might be ramps that show up and ramps usually only show up during the spring. There you go. Got my two pike cleaned. 
I'm gonna rinse all of this off and then I'm just gonna throw in some boiling water. Fish doesn't take that long to cook, so I'm gonna just keep this in for about five, 10 minutes or so. Because I have two fish in here, I'm probably gonna leave it for about 10 minutes because they were pretty cold when I put it in the boiling water. This shouldn't take long to cook. Perfect, separating from the bone easily and the meat is tender and sweet and it's fully cooked. So I've been spending time just removing the bones and such. This is sort of like the upper portion and through here there's a bunch of Y bones and I just kind of break it apart. I press up against it to see if I can find any of them. Piece might not actually have any Y bones because I'm not seeing any because it would be in the middle of the layers. Yeah, this looks like it's boneless. Ah, see, this does. This has the Y bone. So they're bones that literally just look like Ys. I'm not sure if the camera is gonna focus on this or not, but you can kind of see it, see? And they're in between pretty much every single layer of meat here. This is another section of uh, the fish. So I think that's why there's Y bones here. All right, so all of the boneless pieces are down here and all the pieces that might have bones are all left up here. So now I'm preparing all of the vegetables. Here you go, this is all of it. Most spring rolls can include a variety of other vegetables too, like bean sprouts and pickled carrots and even white radish and stuff. Just for basics, I would like to usually use this. So this right here is mint. I'm not entirely sure what type of mint this is, but you can tell that it's a lot different from a lot of the mint that you usually find at the grocery store. This is a more milder mint and it's not as, as strong and it has more of a sweet smell and aroma and taste to it. And I've got some lettuce right here. These are just small baby cucumbers. You can use those larger cucumbers too, but I like these more. This in Vietnamese is called ha. It is a type of like green onion. The leaves are very flat. It's sort of like a green chive or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what it is in English, but in Vietnamese, I know this as ha. It almost looks like grass, but I'm gonna wash all of this and I'm gonna prepare it on a plate. There you go, that's all the vegetables. All right, so now on to the dipping sauce. We have Chin Su's fish sauce right here. I actually just got this bottle yesterday and I've been looking for a bottle like this for months now. This is supposedly the number one fish sauce in Vietnam, but I personally like Red Boat fish sauce more because the ingredients for this is literally just fish and salt, anchovies and salt. And this is a lot saltier. And uh, when you use this to make sauces as dipping sauces, it doesn't get diluted because it's so salty. With Chin Su, Chin Su, the ingredients actually says anchovies, salt, water, sugar, and then 2% or less monosodium glutamate, citric acid, disodium, disodium inosinate, and natural flavor. <laughs> I really don't know any of the other ingredients, but for the most part, this is slightly more processed, mainly because there's just more ingredients. This is a much more sort of pure natural form of fish sauce. But this is not bad either. This is a lot better than many of the other fish sauces that are on the market, in my opinion. But even though there's sugar in it, it's not that sweet at all. Like you barely could even taste the sweetness in it. We're going to make a sauce right now. It's called Nuk Mam Jam, which basically just means uh, fish sauce dipping sauce. I rarely make this sauce myself. My family, my mom and dad usually makes it, um, but we don't use this dipping sauce a whole lot actually. We usually eat like peanut sauce and stuff, but that's mainly because uh, depending on the type of uh, spring roll that you're making, the sauces are different. So because I'm eating with fish, this is the sauce that I'm going to be making today. If I'm eating with pork and shrimp, that sauce will be the peanut sauce. But if I'm eating spring rolls with beef, I'm using a different sauce too. Yeah, we're gonna continue with this. I'm gonna boil up some water and throw this in. This is Vietnamese rice vermicelli noodles. The specific brand is Bakogai, which is just three ladies brand. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't make this sauce enough times to really know the portions, so I'm kind of just gonna wing it. I know the ingredients, I just don't know the, the ratios. 
<laughs> like I for sure don't need this much garlic, although I would like to use this much garlic. <laughs> and then I definitely don't need this much uh, chili peppers either. But let's get started with this. So mincing it like this by knife usually just takes some patience. It's not that hard to get it minced. We're almost already there. So I just go like this. I just rock it back and forth like this a couple of times. This looks fine enough to me. There you go. Water's boiling now. We're just gonna toss these in, let them cook. And this really should not take that long at all. I have sugar here. I'm gonna put in probably like four or five spoons of sugar, maybe six, maybe seven, maybe eight even. <laughs> there you go. I'm pretty sure that this is what I actually need. We need some limes. Squeeze this in. So that's two whole limes that I'm using. Like I'm trying to emphasize here that I'm not following a like a strict recipe. I'm just kind of winging this. I just know the ingredients and I'm just kind of throwing things together. Because usually this is how I personally cook. I usually just put things together and I taste it along the way. So here's the fish sauce. I usually personally usually use the red boat, but I just don't have the large bottle right now. So I'm just gonna use chin tzu. Oh, I'm just gonna eye this. We're gonna be using about that much maybe and about this much of water. So I'm just gonna mix this and kind of dissolve the sugar. And as far as the chilies go, I think I'm just gonna cut them. So just like this. And I try to cut them at an angle just so that it looks nicer. Get everything in, even the seeds. And you can adjust the amount of chili peppers you put in to adjust how hot you want it. For some reason, I feel like I'm missing something still. But I think this should be it. This is all I need. I feel like I'm missing the green chili peppers. Sometimes when I make this, I have the green chili peppers. Okay, this is done now. I'll just pour everything out. I'm gonna rinse it in under cold water just to stop its cooking. There you go. Okay, let's see here. I'm gonna try it. <coughs> oh man, mm, spicy, but it's good. I was not expecting it to be so well made so far. <laughs> well, that's perfect. I really don't need to do anything. It's kind of thicker than usual, more condensed than usual. I feel like I could probably add some more water, but but oh man, this is perfect. Perfect level of spice. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it like that. I'm going to ladle it in to a jar. That way it's a lot easier to just store. The rest of the chili peppers, I'm actually going to just put it in a jar with the chinsu. And I'm gonna make something like this. This is a jar of just chili peppers, the red and green Thai chili peppers, and then fish sauce, and that's it. And this makes for a good dipping sauce also. It's spicy, it's salty, pungent, and it's really good. Now we got this. So this is bentang, this is uh, rice paper. Same thing with this right here too. This is also rice paper, but it's a smaller one. I don't know how many inches this is, but it's 22 centimeters. Uh, this is the size that I typically use and eat and like kind of make my spring rolls. But this is a lot larger. I personally don't usually like using this size, but um, let me see here. This isn't, oh, this is 31 centimeters, but I like this brand. This brand, uh, the Three Ladies brand is really good. The rice paper doesn't rip while you're like rolling it up and stuff. I don't know about this one, but we're going to try this one as well today. So here's just one. I usually like to double it up and, uh, and then make my roll, but uh, I'm going to test it with just one for now. So I just fill the bowl up with some hot water and this is how I, do it. I just go in like this, get it wet, and uh, that should be it. And place it on the plate. All right, so let me show you how you build this. So over time, this is going to soften up and you'll be able to roll it just fine. I usually put down a piece of lettuce first. You kind of can just build this however you'd like, to be honest, but this is how I usually like doing it. And then I put uh, the cucumbers down, and then here's the mint. Like I said, I don't remember or know exactly what type of mint this is, but it's a milder mint. And we've got the rice vermicelli noodles here. Just place it like this. Now the main protein source right here. Break it up, spread it out. 
just like that. Now you've got the grass. <laughs> it's uh, the green onions. I just go like that. And now you roll it up. Let's see how this rice paper handles this. I might have to use two sheets instead, but we'll see. Hmm, not bad. Didn't really tear or anything, and it feels really firm and tight. That's not bad, that's pretty good. So there we go. We got a spring roll, a Vietnamese spring roll. And so I'm gonna make a few more of these with this wrapper, and then I'm gonna start doing the bigger wrapper too, and then we'll get started and eat. There you go, the lettuce. Since the rice paper sheet is a lot bigger, might as well stuff this a lot more then. There you go. This is basil. <laughs> this is Thai basil. It's not supposed to be in here, <laughs> but it works too. This is, Thai basil is something that uh, is often used as well. Totally should not have been in there, but that's fine. There you go, got all that. These are the boneless tail pieces. There you go. There you go, wrap. If you think about it, these spring rolls are sort of like burritos. <laughs> there you go, perfect. So I'm gonna use the smaller sheets and I'm gonna double it up and make a wrap. And that is everything. Let's go outside and eat. So I gotta be honest, I actually like that new wrap more than I do the regular uh, Three Ladies brand. It feels like it'll stay together a lot better. But let's give this all a try. I got a beer with me too. We'll have some of this. So let's mix this up, pour it out. There you go. And I'll start with this. Dip. Mm. <laughs> oh man, it is so good. This sauce is perfect. And no bones so far in the fish. Yeah, that was really good. Here's the cut half of the larger uh, rice paper roll. I feel like this one is softer and this actually might break up a little bit more than the other one. I like the other one a lot more. I guess I got a new favorite brand for this. Yeah, still no bone. I think I did a pretty good job of getting rid of the bones and making sure I have all the boneless pieces. So like I mentioned, depending on the type of Vietnamese spring roll you're eating, it changes the sauce that you're using. So because I'm using fish, this is typically the sauce that you will be using. You normally would not use like a uh, peanut sauce with fish. You can, but my parents say that it just tastes better if you do it like this. Certain types of meat pairs better with certain types of sauces. So there's several variants to this. So like this one right here, fish goes with this. There's also pork belly and shrimp. That one is very popular, but that one actually is eaten with a peanut sauce. And then there's also another sauce called mum nem, which is like a fermented fish sauce. Now you take chopped up pineapple, onions, garlic, along with that uh, fermented fish sauce, you pour it in, you mix it, you cook it down. And that is usually eaten with beef, but the beef that we cook is really thin slices of raw beef that you dip in boiling water, but the boiling water is a mix between vinegar and some water. And then you wrap it up like usual, but you dip it with that sauce instead. I have been asking my parents uh, to teach me more about like Vietnamese food and stuff. I've grown up eating Vietnamese food, but I never was really attentive to like all the ingredients uh, and like the sauces and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, I am eventually going to make a cookbook and uh, I find this to be a really interesting uh, project <laughs> and it's been fun so far. But yeah, I'm gonna finish this off. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Peace out. Mm. <laughs> mm. I almost forgot about the beer. <laughs> this is a German beer. It's a authentic Bavarian wheat beer made, uh, brewed and bottled in Germany. Hmm. Ah. 
Oh man, yeah, that is good. 